guys, thanks for stopping by. Welcome back to the channel. So this week we are going to do a back to school. I'm going to have a few tutorials, some advice, some style, who knows. I really don't know what I'm doing at this point except for I know I wanted to do this video. So basically I wanted to give you guys 10, count them 10, advice that I have for starting school, if you're already in school, kind of just some generic advice with school and going back to school. So even if you aren't a freshman some of this may still apply, it may not, who knows, watch and find out. I didn't have a traditional college experience, so I'm trying to give you guys advice that maybe can work for every kind of situation, because some people may live on campus, some people may not, and you know, you may be at like more of a tech type school like I went to, or maybe a traditional college, so hopefully this advice kind of works for a lot broader of an audience, and not just like particular to what I experienced, because mine was a little bit different. Number one, make as many friends as you can, and I don't mean like don't be yourself and just like friend everyone, but this is the best way to network. I'm not sure how it is with a traditional college because you may all be in the same major, but for me going to more of an art school, I have friends that are photographers, I have friends that are MPT or movie majors, I have friends that are fine artists, I have friends that are graphic designers, and if you make friends with all of those people, like obviously like them for their personality and not just for their major, but if you make lasting friendships, you guys can do collaborations, you guys can do projects in the future, if you know somebody's looking for a graphic designer, you're like, I have an awesome friend, she's super talented. You never know who those people are going to meet in the future, and you never know who you're going to meet in the future. I had a friend that told me that he got a job, his current job, because somebody had remembered how cool he was from high school, and was like, he's a good guy, you should hire him, he does this work. So you never know what connections people are going to have, and how it's going to benefit you or how you can benefit their lives down the road so you never know what opportunities you could send somebody and vice versa. Unfortunately a lot of mine have since left the Bay Area because obviously I went to school for fashion if any of you guys didn't know and a lot of the fashion is related in New York, LA or overseas so most of my friends have actually moved on, which I do have a friend, Joe. If you guys are not watching the current season of Project Runway, you should because my friend Joe is in it and he was my sewing buddy and he's just amazing. So go watch him and support him. Team Joe Poli. So anyways, number two, explore around your college. If your college is in a not so great area, then maybe don't do that because I know like some parts of some surrounding areas of colleges are not that great. But if you were in a big city, like my campus, we didn't have a campus. My school was actually a bunch of little buildings all over the San Francisco downtown area. And we wanted to explore all the time. You don't need to do everything your freshman year. You're going to be there the next four or five years. So you don't need to cram everything into your freshman year. But definitely go explore. Go enjoy the city. I didn't get to do that as much because I crammed like a five-year program into four years. Was a little nuts and out of control and so I didn't really get to enjoy and spend time exploring the city as much as I did so I'm doing that now. Number three, join groups, sororities, clubs, anything. Find other people with your common interests or just join groups to find people without your common interests. For my school there were a lot of big buildings and they were all kind of one major so all the fashion majors were in one building, all the movie makers were in another building. So unless you took like general ed courses, you really didn't see people from other majors. So joining clubs, joining groups, people in your dorms, that was how you met people with other majors. That's kind of cool to find people with differences but also similarities and you never know those could be like your best friends for life. Number four, a few essentials that are necessary, a robe, headphones, your own printer. You need a printer in your room. I don't know why some people never had printers and they were constantly going to other people's rooms to print their stuff. You need your own printer. Get it. Number five, prioritize your experiences over grades. And I don't mean to say this as like don't get good grades, but I wouldn't stress over like an A- minus or a B. If you're like me and you want to have straight A's or you want to have really high scores, go for it. But when I graduated college, I sort of wished 
I had more experiences, more internships, more hands-on work with my major than I did having straight A's or a very high GPA. Most of the jobs are not going to go, hey, you went to that school, what's your grade point average? What were the grades you got in your classes? They're going to say, do you have experience to do this job we're trying to hire you for? Do you have previous employment experience? Did you have an internship? Did you do any jobs on the side? Did you do any volunteer work specific to this job? While you need to do your studies and not waste your parents' money or your own money if you're paying for college and actually do work, you should also take advantage of any opportunities to volunteer or to intern or to help a teacher, anything to get that physical hands-on experience. I mean, if you work for a teacher or a company or internship volunteer organization, they can write a great reference letter for you when you're trying to get that job. So definitely prioritize getting those experiences and do well on your homework. But if you're at a college like mine and it's mainly like your talent versus your grades, like you're gonna wanna show them you have the talent and you have the experience. Number six, have a go-to outfit. And I mean like your signature go-to. If it's like this favorite shirt and jeans or a t-shirt and jeans or this dress, have a go-to outfit. So this way, if you're sitting in your dorm or you're at home and someone's like, hey, let's go get lunch right now. You're like, crap, I've been in my PJs all day, it was my day off. You have this go-to outfit you can just throw on and go. Have a nice go-to outfit for dinner. This way when someone's like, hey, let's go out, you're like, great, I'll be ready in 10 minutes because you don't want to be that friend that's like taking two hours to get ready. Just saying. Spend more time on your makeup because we're all here on a beauty channel and just have that go-to outfit. Number seven, have open communication with your roommate. Obviously this applies if you were in the dorms which I highly suggest all freshmen stay in the dorms at least your first year because this is the easiest, easiest, easiest way to make friends is to be in the dorms. And you may get a good roommate, which I've had great roommates in the past. You may have terrible roommates. I had like an eh, okay roommate. I think she's like a rapper somewhere. I don't even know. But if you have open communication, then things will go smoothly. No like passive aggressive notes like someone needs to clean their dishes, you know. There's only two people in the room, maybe three. It's gonna be really obvious who it's from and who is being passive aggressive. Just have open conversation. Just be like, hey, I did my dishes, do yours. You know, you don't need to be mean, but if you have that communication with your roommate, then there's gonna be no fights, there's not gonna be any like awkward tension. If you wanna bring somebody over and they don't like guests, like you're just gonna have less awkward moments if you have really good communication. And who knows, that person could end up being really good friends with you. I am still friends with my first roommate in college. I haven't seen her obviously in years, but we still talk on Facebook and I, I loved her, she was awesome. We had so much in common, but we had differences. But we were very open and communicative about what was going on. Hey, I'm bringing somebody over, is that cool? I, you know, no, I'm naked, I'm showering, I don't know, whatever. Okay, cool. Just have that communication with people and don't like bring on surprises and you will have a much smoother time with a roommate, especially if you're not used to having a roommate. Number eight. If you are at home and you are not doing anything, do your homework. And I know this is going to sound more like a hey, student productive kind of advice, but I knew so many people that on a Sunday I'd be like, hey, let's go out. And they're like, can't, I got this paper. When I knew they were at home like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday playing video games or doing nothing or going out. So what I would do, because I hated when people did that to me, and I hated doing that to other people, if I was home after class and it's like, I have no plans tonight, I did my homework. I caught up as much as I could. This way when someone's like, hey, do you wanna go to dinner? I'm like, yeah, I got enough done today. Like I'm on track to make my deadlines so I can go out right now. And I'd never have to say, hey, I gotta finish this paper, I can't. I mean, obviously I was never on time with everything and I'm a very good procrastinator, but I'd make sure to at least get the homework that was easy to get done or at least what was gonna be coming up in the next two to three days, so that if I did have last minute plans, I was able to go out and I wasn't like stressing and like, no guys, don't, nobody call me, I have a paper. So get your stuff done when you can. This way you can go out with friends when they want you to go out. Number nine, do not skip class unless you are sick. Let me just put it this way. Your parents are paying for college, you're paying for college, someone is paying for your college, or you will be paying for your college, 
later down the road and you do not want to waste their money or your money. And I know that sounds really cliche and like, duh. In the first couple weeks of school, make a friend in every class you have. This way, if you do have to skip class or, or if you're like super sick, you can call that person and say, hey, what was the homework so that you are caught up. I don't know with some colleges how far back it puts you if you miss a class, but in art school, because we'd only have like one six hour class a week or two three hour classes, God, they were like the longest classes ever. You'd be like so behind if you waited to catch up that next week. Like you needed to find out what the homework was and do it that week, even if you weren't there. Otherwise you would be so behind. And if you missed two classes, it was almost impossible to catch up unless you just like locked yourself in your dorm or your apartment and just worked. So I highly suggest do not skip class unless you absolutely need to. And if you do, you better get that homework done anyways. Number 10, sign up for classes as soon as you can or you will have a terrible schedule. Some colleges are smaller and you can kind of wait a little bit or there's not as many classes. I know for my school, once you got to junior and senior year, there was really only one class because our majors, some of the sub majors were so small that you only had one or two class options or it was only offered on a Saturday and you had no choice. But then when you were a freshman and a sophomore, there's like obviously 10 classes for the same class, like 10 class times, you do not want to be stuck with a terrible schedule. Now, I've seen a lot of these videos and a lot of them are like, don't do 8 a.m. classes because you're totally not going to get up for that. I think if you can get up for a 10 a.m. class, you still have the rest of your day. In college, I might have given you different advice and my freshman year, I was very picky and I told my advisor, I was like, I don't want Mondays, I don't want Fridays because I want to be able to fly home on the weekend, I don't want 8 a.m. classes, so I was stuck with a 12 to 250 class that required me to have a bunch of stuff, sewing and drawing stuff, and then I had to like go to the other side of the city to my other building that started from 3.30 to 9.50. So I was in class one day from basically noon to 10 p.m. and had a bunch of stuff to carry because I was being super picky with my schedule. But I was able to do that because I picked my classes early. If you don't, you might be stuck with that one because you just waited till the last minute. I stupidly chose to do that and I never did it again and I really tried to not stack. Like I have a few friends that it took them five or six years to graduate just because they couldn't get into the classes they wanted to get into because they were so impacted and there were so many people and they would just miss the deadline to sign up. So also if you are trying to graduate on time, I highly suggest you sign up for classes as soon as possible to get the best schedule and get in the classes you need to get into, especially if it's a very hard school to get classes and you won't be stuck with like some stupid elective class that you're paying money for that you don't even care about. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found these helpful. I know they're not super traditional, like don't fall in love, join sports, da, 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 advice, but I think they're really important and I think there are things that I wish people would have told me when I went to college. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Definitely list any other pieces of advice you have because I'd love other people to see this video and to see the comments. So feel free to share anything that you learned from college, anything you wish other people would learn, and let's just get a conversation going. So definitely give this video a thumbs up if you like this, and obviously there will be more in the series. And subscribe if you haven't already, and check out all my social media links in the description box or at the end of the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.